3 p.m. So we'll call the meeting to order. This meeting is being held in a hybrid manner where members of the committee, staff, and public can participate in person or electronically. This meeting is being live streamed and recorded and will be available on the township website. Notice is hereby provided that under the authority of the Municipal Act 2001, in accordance with Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, that all information attained is considered part of the public record. First item on the agenda is confirmation of the agenda. Can I have a mover? And seconded by Mr. Becking. Are there any uh, comments from the mover? From the seconder? Anyone else? Any changes? Uh, then I'll call the question. Everyone in favor? Thank you. Do we have any disclosure of pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof? Yes, sir. Madam Chair, yes. Uh, I will not be participating in the first item dealing with the CRCA application as uh, I have a potential conflict. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And the clerk will provide the paperwork that needs to be done for that. And sorry, go, please go ahead to the clerk. And uh, through you, you um, Madam Chair, Bert, can you please uh, describe your pecuniary interest, please? Okay, next is adoption of the minutes. Uh, the recommendation is that the minutes of the June 18th, 2024 meeting of the Community Grant Committee be adopted. Can I get a mover for that, please? Mrs. Nye, seconded by Ms. Pierce. Uh, are there any comments or questions regarding the minutes from the mover and seconder? Anyone else? No, then I will call the question. Everyone in favor? Thank you. There are no presentations scheduled uh, for this meeting. Item number six is open forum. During open forum, any person may address the committee on any matter that is listed on the agenda except items that will be subject to a statutory public meeting on the same agenda. Anyone wishing to speak at a committee meeting may register in advance with the clerk's division or can use the raise hand in Zoom when called upon by the chair. Each person will have three minutes to address the committee. So first I'll start in the room. Uh, would the gentleman in our audience like to address the committee at all? Okay, great. That's excellent. Well, thank you and welcome. And to the clerk, do we have anyone online in the audience? Uh, we have no one online for open forum in the audience. Okay, thank you. So we will move on to delegations. There are no delegations scheduled. And the clerk, we have no one online. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda, 8.1, is financial update. The recommendation is that the committee receive the financial update. Did staff want to speak to the update? Okay. So I will ask the committee, are there any questions on the financial update that we received? I had a question, if I could, to staff. On the update, I see the carryover of the opening balance for the year. When do we actually receive funds from the two funders? The agreements are basically more in line with the provincial calendar year than the municipal calendar year. So we end up on a regular calendar year. They end up with a March. So we will send the uh, invoices late in our fiscal year in December, and they will be paid out early into the prior, the next year. So it's just a timing issue on our side that the money that's 424 kind of, we don't receive necessarily until early into 25, nice. but we have enough built up over time that we can bridge the timing. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else on the committee have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, so I'm looking for a motion that the committee receive the financial update. Ms. Nye, 
and a seconder. Mr. Hertz, thank you. And any questions, further questions? No, I'll call the question then. Everybody in favor of receiving the financial update? Thank you. Item 8.2 is the clerk's division report. And we have the report in front of us. So this report is a summary of the grants that have been given in intake one and intake two so far this year. Were there any questions to staff on that report? No. Nope. Okay. Then I'm looking for a motion that the committee receive the clerk's division update. Thank you, Mr. Marshall, and seconded by Mr. Becking. Any further questions or discussion? No, I will call the question. Everyone in favor of receiving the report? Thank you. Item 8.3 was uh, at the previous meeting, ideas were presented on uh, having a web page for the community grant committee and also a community grants uh, web page. Were there any questions or comments to staff on those two items? Uh, through your chair, uh, we'd just like to provide a little bit of an update in regards to um, raising awareness for the community grants. Um, so at the June 18th meeting, uh, the committee directed staff to start uh, promoting um, past applicants or past recipients, sorry. Um, so we just wanted to um, provide the committee with an update that we have on our social media provided information about three different past recipients of uh, the community grants and we'll be continuing to do so. That's very good. Thank you for that update. Uh, so if there are no questions, I'm looking for a motion that the committee uh, receive uh, the update on the uh, grant committee webpage and community grants webpage. Ms. Pierce, Ms. Nye, and all in favor? Thank you. So getting into the meat of the meeting today, we are looking at the capital grant applications. So item 9.1 is a grant from the Cataraqui Region Conservation Authority requesting a $60,000 grant for their well decommissioning project. Mr. Herbs has declared a conflict, so will not participate in the discussion or the voting. Are there any questions to staff on this before I look for a motion? Ms. Pierce? Oh, staff, sorry. I noticed, there it is. The, the staff uh, comment was actually a question and I wondered if there was an answer to the question. Uh, just so the committee is aware, I'm just going to look into the online attendance to see if anyone from the Conservation Authority is here to answer any questions. Uh, if not, um, the answer would be that the only funding we have information on is the one on the application. So it does not appear at this time that uh, the applicants from the Conservation Authority are here to answer any questions. So just a brief summary. So the, the application is to provide funding for a program that would subsidize the cost of decommissioning unused wells on properties in the township. Um, I would look for a motion. Uh, the recommendation is that the committee recommends that the council blank the Cataraqui Region Conservation Authority Community Grant application in the amount of blank. So uh, a motion Madam, that it, we- Madam Chair, I had another question. Sorry, I didn't know if you saw my hand or yeah, not. Sorry, Councillor Parks, who's online for those who can't see her. Thank you. And if you don't mind uh, through the chair, I'm not sure if staff can answer that, this or not, but I was wondering if um, 
and excuse my ignorance when it comes to wells because I'm on municipal services, so I don't really know. Um, when someone applies for a well permit, is there any consideration given for when that um, the obligation to decommission that well when it's no longer being used? Is, is there anything in the permit process for that? Uh, through you, Chair, to uh, Councillor Parks. Unfortunately, we don't have that information. That is all done through the ministry. Um, so I wouldn't have information on that process. Okay. But right. that is something we could uh, provide if you wish. Mr. Becking, another question? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I guess when I was thinking about this application, you know, a number of questions came to mind. First of all, it, why, if this is such an important project, why isn't it part of the of the Conservation Authority's annual uh, requisition from the constituent municipalities within the watershed? Um, to what degree is this is this being driven provincially? I know that uh, from my past experience that that wellhead protection is a is a very significant uh, issue. Um, where is the province in all of this? Um, quite frankly, I could go on for an hour or more and, and uh, there won't be any answers. I'm on the basis of the information that's presented, certainly I'm not prepared to support it at this time. Now, if there, you know, if there's a possibility of delay or, or postponement until we can get some more information. But when I look at the mandate of the grant program, and I look at the mandate of the Conservation Authority, and I look at the provincial mandate for wellhead protection and a whole host of other related issues. Uh, there's a disconnect there that I don't think, um, uh, I don't, you know, notwithstanding the fact that I'll be the first one to say, I think wellhead protection is, a, is an important issue. And based on the technical information that's been provided, it's fairly obvious to me that there is some significant degree of concern but we seem to be going at this through the back door i don't think that that's a, uh, at least there's not enough information to substantiate why that's an appropriate thing this time you look to the committee for other comments Hi. i'm in full agreement <laughs> first of all um i'm not sure that this is the, the proper program for this i agree that it's extremely important but i don't know i don't think again looking at the mandate i i agree that i don't think this is the right right fit um but i also did have more of a technical question which is and forgive me if there is a process for this um but how are the funds administered with 90 percent going to to the 10 percent being covered by the homeowner does this go to the contractor? Does it go to the homeowner? How is that 90-10 administered? So, sorry, through your chair to um, Cara. Um, so in regards to the Conservation Authority's application, is that what you're referring to? Um, so that funding, um, I don't think that they put that information in the application to explain how they were going to have that 10%, 90% for um, how they were going to distribute that. So there's no, the, not that we're not aware of any checks and balances in place to make sure that that money that's, that is administered actually goes to the homeowners and then is actually used for a well and properly decommissioned. That, so again, through your chair to uh, Cara, so that was not uh, displayed in the application. However, that's something we could ask for from them. Thank you. Ms. Pierce. There we go. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the comments from my fellow committee members. It's kind of a, um, a motherhood issue. It's such an important item. And so there is a tendency to to be supportive of their request. But I think uh, Mr. Becking has really made a very good point. And we do know that even though the Conservation Authority is dependent on, on taxpayers for their funding and province as well, um, I think I think the question is is a good one whether or not it's appropriate 
appropriate to use this particular fund to support this very much needed project. So I think I've been swayed. Thank you for that. On that, I will look uh, for a motion. So the motion could be either that the committee recommends that council approve the Cataraqui Conservation Authority community grant in the amount of 60,000, that we the council decline the Cataraqui uh, Conservation Authority community grant in the application of 60,000 or that council defer a decision. So I'm looking for a motion or any combination thereof. Oh, Councillor Parks, sorry. All right, Madam Chair, I'll make the motion. Um, I would motion that the committee decline the um, the application for the grant stream from the uh, Cataraqui uh, Conservation Authority. And I will look for a seconder on that. Ms. Nye. Any comments from the mover? Um, as as my colleagues have mentioned on the, on the committee, I, I don't believe this is the right funding stream for this project. I think there is other opportunities for the Cataraque Conservation Authority to explore, um, whether that actually go back towards the taxpayers or whether it becomes part of the application process for permits. Um, but my concern is that if, if it goes for the grant stream, then um, people may take advantage of that, not take the opportunity to honor their obligations with their wealth, maintenance of their wealth. So I'll leave it at that. Comments from the center. <laughs> and anyone else, any further comments? Do yeah. you, um, Madam Chair, I just wanted to make sure that before the committee votes on this motion, that the committee understands that um, you're declining, which means that the application will not come back to the committee in the form that it's submitted right now. Staff will not be reaching out to the applicants to gather more information. Um, and if that's the intent of the committee, then um, I'm okay with the, the motion that's presented. Thank you, and I'll go to the mover. That is your intent? That is my intent. Okay. Seconder, that's comments from anyone else on the committee? No, with that then I will call the question. So the recommendation is that the committee recommends that council decline the Cataraqui Region Conservation Authority community grant application in the amount of $60,000. If you agree with that, a show of hands, please. Okay, motion has passed. Moving on now to item 9.2, which is a request for $50,000 for two new walk-in freezers from Partners in Mission Food Bank. Are there any questions to staff? And I believe we have Mr. Irwin on as well if there are questions directly to the applicant. Mr. Marshall. Yes, are these uh, walk-in coolers now, they're gonna be uh... Uh, these two coolers are going into the uh, main headquarters of Partners in Mission Food Bank? Or is one going to Atmosphere? Or is that where they're going? I don't know what these walking coolers are for, which is a good idea. I just want to know where they're going to be uh, maintained, mostly uh, downtown in Kingston? I believe so, but we have uh, Mr. Irwin on screen now. I, I would ask staff if we can... Welcome, Mr. Irwin. So the question was, where is the physical location of the two coolers going to be? And if you uh, wanted to respond to that, please. Certainly. I'd just like to clarify that it's one walk-in cooler and walk -in, one walk-in freezer. They both have a value of about $100,000. Uh, they will both be located in our new location at 4 Harvey Street, where we build our orders and store our food to service Amherst We have Mr. Herbst, a question. Through you, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm sorry, that still doesn't clarify the location for me. Where is, is it Harvey Street in Kingston or is it Harvey Street in Amherstview? Sorry, I'm very sorry, for Harvey Street, Kingston. Thank you. Are there other questions from members of the committee? 
I would be looking for a motion oh, then. Ma oh. Madam Chair, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, more, I guess, I'm not sure if this is for our staff or if it would be for Mr. Irwin. Um, these walk-in coolers, um, you know, I understand the, the program that you run. I think it's a great program. If by chance the program closed, these are built-in pieces of equipment. They're not like your standard refrigerator. So um, what would happen to that equipment? Would it be able to be decommissioned and sold? Like, or, or does, and then is there funds that, maybe this is a question for staff, does the funds come back to the grant if there's um, some money that can come out of that? I'm not really sure how that process would work. I think first of all, I would direct that question to staff. If if grant funds are provided for a project that is decommissioned in the future and there's residual from that, there's no there's nothing in our agreement that brings that back to the township. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, there's nothing in the policy right now about decommissioned projects. The only um, stipulation is that if a project is not completed, the the funds are returned or if the funds are not used then the funds are returned but this is something that we could write into the agreement um, uh, when the funds are issued uh, and the committee could make a motion with that respect so uh, to approve the funds uh, subject to the condition that if it is decommissioned then the funds are returned mr Irwin. I know the local food infrastructure fund has a two year, um, if the uh, program wraps up the fee, the funds must be returned um, if it's under two years. Beyond that, it's nothing on that. Just as another example for you. Thank you for that. Are there other questions or comments before I look for a motion? Mr. Hurst? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, while I am very supportive of what uh, the the uh, food bank does, um, it, it strikes me that there are duplication of services in this area that could be examined by the various players um, to see how best the Amherst View or the, the Loyalist Township um, people who, who require these services can be served here locally as opposed to having to deal with someone from outside. Um, in our other intake, we had uh, several applicants who uh, were also looking for support for this kind of programming uh, support. And um, I, I see a, something of a need of, of trying to, to see how we can best um, consolidate all these these uh, requirements and, and keep the funds here locally. Uh, not to say that uh, the food bank doesn't support uh, the, uh, the needy here in Loyalist Township. But I think that uh, from my perspective, there may be some duplication of services that could be looked at. Thank you. Thank you. And if I may just for information, there there has been a working group that the township has been meeting with that includes Partners in Mission and some of the other groups that are working in food insecurity in the township. And the, the goal of the working group is to coordinate, talk about what groups are doing what and and how there can be support for, for each of them. So so there is some work being done on that and, and Partners in Mission are one of the leaders in that discussion. So thank you. Ms. Pierce. Madam Chair, we can't hear Ms. Pierce. Her mic must not be on. Councillor Parks, can you hear her now? Maybe share Kara's mic. Thank you. Is that better? Oh, wow, interesting. Um, okay, so I just wanted to say that I think what the, the work of the Partners in Mission Food Bank is uh, 
is really uh, commendable and obviously of, of uh, great value to the community. And I think pr the partnership with the Sharing Center is is also very um, important. And I'm, you know, I've had some opportunity through food drop-offs this, this summer to see how valuable that is. Um, my question is more whether the ask is commensurate with the use, given the size of uh, Loyalist Township's involved, use of the program as opposed to the rest of, of the greater Kingston area. So thank you for that, Ms. Pierce. So, so as I'm looking for a motion, the committee has the latitude to recommend to approve, defer, deny, and also has the right to put a different amount in than the amount requested, could be higher, could be lower, being mindful that all of this is going to go to council as a recommendation and they have the final approval for all of the grants. So uh, I'm, I'm welcoming discussion amongst the committee about, about that. Do we have, Madam Chair, some uh, sense of the uh, the uh, the services that the organization provides to residents of of the township? I'm sorry, I, I'm not sure that it's in the report. Sure, I would ask Mr. Irwin because I I know that there is information and I don't want to misstate it. Uh, if you could talk about the presence in Loyalist Township specifically. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember some off the top of my head. Um, so I did include in the package the number of Loyalist Township people we've helped over the past, over 2023 and 2024, ensuring that, you know, how we're seeing that increase. Uh, we've, we actually were originally started in uh, the, the mother house in Amherstview, so that's our actual, our very first home 40 years ago was there. Uh, and, and as the need to grew in Kingston, we moved here to manage that bigger need. Um, and I'm going to have to apologize, Madam Chair, in that I am reaching for the numbers and I can't find them. Um, if my report is there, that has the 2023 Amherstview only numbers, as well as the 2024 here to date at the time of the application numbers. I do have the report in front of me. So thank you. The report says that Partners in Mission Food Bank provided food for 234 residents of Loyalist, Loyalist Township. In 2023, that number increased to 311. And as of the end of August 2024, they've already helped 299 residents. Um, so that's the, the scope of, of what we're seeing in the township. If I might, Madam Chair, I, what I was trying to get a handle on is what what sort of percentage uh, does that represent of the total uh, population serviced by the organization? Um, you know, is it 10 percent or is it 50 percent or is it you know 75 percent? Mr. Irwin, back to you. So the roughly 300 residents, how would that be as a percentage of the total people you've helped? As a percentage, that would be around 7.5% approximately. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I will look for a motion. Would anyone like to put forward a motion on this? Mr. Hurst. I'll, uh, I'll move that the committee recommend that council approve the application in the amount that they have requested. Okay. And I'll look for a seconder on that. Mr. Marshall is the seconder on that. Comments from the mover? No, I think uh, we've had good discussion on this. Thank you. Okay. From the seconder, any comments, Mr. Marshall? From anyone else on the committee? Okay, I will call the question. Everyone in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you very much. And now we are moving to the program and event grant applications. 
Item 10.1 is the Amherst Island Recreation Association requesting a $2,565 grant for the Jingle and Mingle event. And I will open to any questions to staff about this application. None, I will look for a motion. Mr. Becking. So moved. That the committee recommends that council approve the Amherst Island Recreation Association community grant application in the amount of $2,565. Seconded by Ms. Pierce. And are there any comments further from the mover, seconder? Oh. Uh, so I will call the question. Everyone in favor of the motion, please raise a hand. Thank you. The next item, 10.2, is Lennox and Addington Resources for Children requesting a $2,000 grant for food for their early on program. Do we have any questions to staff on that? Mr. Hurst. Madam Chair, the only question I would have is, uh, does this look like it's something that could become an annual recurring request? Through you, your chair, to um, Mr. Herfst. Um, so this is the first time that we have seen the Lennox and Addington Resources for Children request this sort of grant um, over the last, I would believe, since 2022. Um, so there is no past uh, with this uh, organization at this time. Mr. Beck. Um Madam Chair, is this a program that is uh, provided for by the county? My understanding, and only just from what I read in the application, is it is a county program, and they're funding, they have a funding shortage because of increased input costs. Is that correct to staff who spent more time with the application? Uh, through you, Chair, um, from my understanding, um, reviewing the application, it is, again, that they're just looking for some extra funding that they don't already have for this program. Ms. Pierce? Try again. Is that better this time? Yes. Good. Um, <clears throat> Because I'm, I have grandchildren, I'm familiar with this sort of thing, and I understand that it's provincially supported as well. And I think it's a great program. Um, I would, I, I think, I would definitely be supportive of this because I think it does provide opportunities, as the application well points out, um, for all families to have snacks when they're attending something like this and there's no stigma attached to it and I think it's a very good program. Uh, through you chair uh, it appears that there may be um, the applicant uh, for Lennox and Addington Resources for Children here in the virtual um, so I will invite them in as a panelist um, to answer any questions that the committee um, has had unanswered. So I'll ask the committee for a motion on item 10.2. I move for the $2,000. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that? Ms. Nye. Any comment from the mover? From the seconder? Anyone else on the committee? Seeing none, I will call the question. Everyone in favor, please raise a hand. Next is a request from 10.3. Uh, Kingston Gets Active requesting $9,700 grant for a web design company and independent services to revamp their program and redesign the associated website for their think tank event. Do you have questions about this or... Comments? Mr. Hurst? 
Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. I guess this is for uh, for staff. Is this really an appropriate application when it comes to uh, this type of application where somebody's looking for money to pay somebody to do something for them? Uh, so through you, your chair, uh, to Mr. Herbst. So um, it is up to the committee to make the decision, um, but uh, as per um, the community grant policy, and I believe it was included in the uh, comment section um, and the application from staff, um, there are some aspects of this application that would potentially violate the community grant policy. Comments from others. I'm looking for a uh, motion if, uh, if anyone will feel comfortable putting one together. Mr. Hurst. Madam Chair, I'm inclined to uh, recommend that we decline this particular application. Okay, can I get a seconder on that? Mr. Becky, comments from the mover? From the seconder? Anyone else on the committee? Okay, seeing Madam none. Chair, I, Ma Ma Madam Chair. Oh. Yes, Councillor Parks. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say I support the uh, the motions been put forward. I think um, a lot of this these services are duplicated by what staff already performed for the township. So um, I'm I'm supporting the uh, not to accept the uh, to decline the application. Sorry. All right. Thank you for that. And with that, I'll call the question. Everyone in favor of the motion. Thank you. That's passed. Item 10.4. We have First Amherst View Bath Scouts Group requesting $5,239.75 grant for Scouts Program Hall Rental and Materials for Camping Trips, along with $1,486.14 in-kind services request for Municipal Hall Rental. Do we have any questions for staff on this application? Uh, through you, uh, Chair, uh, is this uh, grant money for the uh, rent? Is that usually class every year for that, or is that the hall? So we have with us a representative from the Boy Scouts. Yeah, I'm the group commissioner, Neil Nuku from the First Amherst Street Bath Boy Scouts. Well, not Boy Scouts, Scouts, because we accept girls also. Um, last year, our rent for the hall for 35 evenings was 700 and change. This year, we booked a second night for our beavers because we have 35 youth enrolled. And the rent for the hall is $3,700 and change. Unfortunately that would deplete our bank account as it uh, stands right now. Um, and then we cannot provide some of this stuff as you probably have seen in the stuff that we've sent in that we've done with the youth. And unfortunately, Scouts Canada does not supply us with very much money. Of the $270 that the kids get charged for registration, we get $25 per youth. So there is a shortfall. So we either do fundraising, which taxes my leaders, the parents, everybody else to do come up with the funds, or we apply for the grant. Unfortunately, a, a portion of it is gonna go towards paying for the hall rentals. Um, I have no other option. Uh, I could be fundraising every weekend in the village of Bath, Odessa, Amherstview, and we still probably wouldn't come up with that kind of money for the hall rental. And I don't know where, how the jump was in price. I don't know what that jump is because that's like 300% in my book, but 
we just can't come up with that kind of money. Thank you for that. You're welcome. For, for the information of the committee as well, so prior to the updated community grants policy that was passed last year, requests for subsidization of, of township facilities was, was outside of this grant stream and was handled differently by council, but it was a decision of council to put those costs as part of our grant stream now. So that's why we're, we're seeing these applications. Do we have any other questions before I look for a motion? Mr. Hurst. M Madam Chair, could I just get clarification? Um, because it looks as though there is a possibility for some in-kind services when it comes to hall rental. And do I understand correctly that that only applies to a portion of the space that is being rented? Or is it possible to expand that uh, in-kind rental to include other spaces? I will turn to staff on that question. So through your chair to Mr. Herfs, um, so as per the community grant policy, we can provide in-kind services of up to $1,500. Uh, so with this, um, the calculation is the max amount. Um, so you'll see, so the $1,486.14 would be the max amount that could be covered as per the amount that it would cost to rent the Amherst View Hall. Do we have any other questions from the committee? Thank you very much for your answers. I will look to the committee for a motion. Mr. Hurst. And I'll second that. Seconded by Ms. Pierce. Are there any comments and questions from the mover? Seconder? What else? Madam Chair, I didn't hear the motion. I'm not sure if the mic was on. Sorry, Councillor Parks. The motion is that the committee recommends that Council approve the first Amherst View Bath Scouts Group community grant application in the amount of $5,239.75 for Scouts Program Hall Rentals and Materials for Camping Trips, along with $1,486.14 in kind services request for municipal hall rental. Thank you. I'm not seeing any other comments on it, so I will call the question. Everyone in favor? Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next item, 10.5, is Ernest Town Barracuda Swim Club requesting a $3,000 grant for guest speakers to speak to club members and families. Do we have any questions about this application, Mrs. Nye? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, again, I, I'm not sure that this is the right stream for this. I'm not sure how this is benefiting the community as per the mandate. It seems to be benefiting the members only, um, number one. And uh, the application also mentioned um, attracting Kingston members. So I'm also curious as to how many members are part of Loyalist. And staff had made comment along this line too, that the application may violate section 4.18C of the policy as the guest speaker sessions will not be open to the public. Do we have any other comments and questions? Mr. Beckman. Uh, I, I, I am inclined to agree with uh, Ms. Nye uh, that this one struck me as being not necessarily an, um, an appropriate use of the of the funds uh, given the mandate of the of the uh, program so um i think i'm I, i'm struggling with this one so i'm looking for a motion from the committee mr becky i'll recommend that the application be uh, respectfully declined and I'm looking for a seconder on that. Mr. Marshall, any comments beyond what we've discussed? Mr. Becking? No, Mr. Marshall? Anyone else on the committee? 
Okay, with that, I will call the question. Everyone in favor of the motion, please raise a hand. Thank you. Item 10.6 is the Loyalist Skating Club of Amherst View requesting $2,597.87 grant for end of year ice show costume and equipment storage rental, along with $1,402.13 in-kind services for municipal ice rental. Do we have any questions about this application? Seeing none, I would look for a motion from the committee. Ms. Pierce. I will move approval of this um, for the amount requested. I think there's a bit of fallout from the current renovations that are being done or the major renovations that are being done that um, the play into this. And I think it's addressing a need um, that should be addressed. And so I'm in favor of it. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Madam Chair, I, I you know, I'm, I'm struggling as well with this one because I, I think this this benefits a very select small group. Um, and again, I go back to what is the purpose of these funds and the mandate of the of the program and. And I'm I'm struggling with where is the community benefit here? I'm I just don't I'm not seeing it. I'm sorry, but I, I just don't see it. Anyway, that's my opinion. Thank you, Madam Nye. Chair. Thank you. Um hence why I struggled with the second. Um, however, I think what pushed it over the edge for me, um, for my approval, uh, is that it's resulting in the show at the end, which will bring the community together. It's not just for the skaters and the, and the, the skate club members. It is a, 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 an event that is held uh, at the end of the year. And that's what I did hesitate, but that's what uh, caused me to approve. Hurst. Madam Chair, um, I, I can't quite agree with what uh, Mr. Becking uh, is saying. Notwithstanding the fact that this might be a small group that uh, has direct benefit, um, it is something that is in the community, it's staying in the community, and it is an activity that uh, personally I, I would... Uh, be supportive of when you have uh, a club like this run by volunteers teaching kids how to skate. I think it's a, uh, it's a very worthwhile endeavor. If I might add as well, I noted staff's comments in this case with respect to the in-kind service. And I think uh, that has to be followed up with this group that, uh, you know, they're not going to have free reign as to where they can store everything in the future. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I might. Yes, please, Councillor Parks. Thank you. Um, I am agreeing with the motion. I, I think it's, it's a worthy organization. Um, in my opinion, this is very similar to the Amherst Island Recreation Committee asking for an event over on the island. Um, to me, it sort of follows the same process where it's a community event, even though there might be a small small group that are, that are uh, applying for it, I guess. Ms. Pierce? I think I would be, uh, with due respect to, to Councillor Parks' uh, comments, I think a greater analogy with the Amherst View Jets 
Yes, yes, yes. I, I see the similarity with this, and it's also true. This one is more common. Um, guys, we are talking about a show that we're going to show the usual now. Do you think uh, patient has? Any further comments? No, so I will call the question. Everyone in favor of the motion, please raise a hand. Anyone against? Voted. Thank you. Item 11, so that is all of the grant applications that we've received in this, this intake. Uh, item number 11, outside, outstanding items list. So did staff want to speak to the outstanding items at all? Uh, through you, your chair, if the committee has any questions about any of the items on the list, we are happy to provide any feedback or comments. Okay. Any comments on that at all? Then I would just ask for a motion then to receive. Mrs. Nye, seconded by Ms. Pierce. All in favor? Please raise a hand. Thank you. Upcoming meeting dates. So the next meeting will be scheduled for February 2025 to consider applications submitted under 2025 intake one. And if there's no other comments, I would look for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Hurst. Madam Chair, one sort of uh, off the wall comment to staff here. Are you receiving applications that we don't see that you reject because they don't meet the terms of the programs? Uh, through, through you, Chair, to Mr. Herfs, uh, every application received is put on the committee's agenda for review. Now I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Beckett, Ms. Nye, all in favor of adjournment? Thank you. Thank you all very much for your time and and uh, efforts in reading the applications and giving them careful thought.